coevolution, for nothing has evolved in isolation. Instead, each species has been selectively shaped to fill a certain niche in the web and to be a fitting partner to other species as exemplified by the bees and the flowers. Even the competition between predator and prey involves the kind of cooperation for each serves to perfect the other. Ophis. As humans, we've stepped down from our part in coevolution. We've taken our forests and completely destroyed them by putting up highways. We've taken our highways and we've put up cities all around them. To push the matters further, we take our trash and we scatter it all around all because it conveniences us. How have we become so destructive as humans, and what is our responsibility in nature and modern society? If we were to remain on this path, what will become of humans? In philosophy class, we've learned a great deal about Western influence and what it's done to the Hawaiian culture. It has now forced us all to evolve from all responsibilities. Humans take what they want, without repercussion in nature. In order for us to co-evolute, we must give back to society and nature. If this downward spiral continues, we're going to continue and endanger the rest of Hawaii's native species. Allow me to elaborate. We take from the environment to fulfill wants and needs in mass quantities. Trees, for example. We take trees and we make paper. But what happens when we take these trees the bugs need the trees, the birds need the trees. These other animals will continue to die off from this. As you can see from the illustration, humans are essentially killing the ecosystem all around us. We must find a way to incorporate nature as a priority again. What better way to do so than to spend time in nature and to clean up what we've messed around us? If you've ever wondered how you can play a part in cleaning up nature, now is your chance. Kavainui was once a great fish pond a thousand years ago in ancient Hawaii. It was used as a source for fishing and fresh water. In fact, more than 200 fish ponds were constructed in ancient Hawaii and were the most advanced aquaculture system in all of Polynesia, according to Kanahele. Kavainui was the largest fish pond in all of Hawaii until water diversions were implemented to suit other needs after the Westerners arrived. The pond was drained for ranching, and consequently invasive plants were introduced to feed the cattle. These invasive species placed by humans have played a role in the endangerment of the native species of Hawaii. Na'apohako is a 12-acre state parcel, parcel of state property under the jurisdiction of the DLNR, overlooking Kavainui Marsh in Kailua, Oahu. The grassroots organization Aha Hui Malama Ika Lokahi have partnered with DLNR to be the curators of Na'apohako. I would now like to introduce my friend and classmate, Janie, She's going to push the matters further into how we can change our society around us today. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. According to Ahobui's website, Ahobui's mission is to develop, promote, and practice a Native Hawaiian conservation ethic relevant to our times that is responsible to both Hawaiian culture and science. This ethic is protective of native culture and natural heritage and is expressed through research, education, and active stewardship. Napohaku is dedicated to women and the Mo'o goddess Hawahine. Hawahine is known to guard Kauai bring an abundance of fish, punish pawn owners who oppress the poor, and ward off sickness. In February of 2012, I began volunteering at Naupohaku. Since then, myself and many others have eradicated invasive plant species, conducted slope and trail maintenance, and reintroduced native plants at Naupohaku. 
Napohaku is also comprised of a unique geological and cultural features. This rock formation was uncovered during the early restoration stage of the park. It resembles a mo'o or a water spirit and in part how Napohaku got its name. From the trailhead at Pa'akori Road, there is a one mile long loop trail through a restored native lowland ecosystem. As you walk the trail, you'll see native plants that once thrived in lowland areas such as Kauai Native Hawaiians still use plants for medicinal purposes and personal use. This noni, the leaves are used as bandages and the juice from the fruit promotes overall wellness. The fruit of the nalpaka is squeezed onto scrapes to help healing. Hippos are used as musical instruments and also containers. It's a very useful plant. Peely grass is used for thatching and the leaves act as a natural waterproofing. This Kokio ula ula is an endemic species that's found nowhere else in the world. It's also listed as an endangered species. There are five different species of Ilima, most serve as ground cover to prevent soil erosion. Ahokui partnered with the nonprofit organization Protect Ho'olawe Ohana to install the water catchment system. The system mirrors the catchment system that PKO uses on Ho'olawe to water their plants. In addition to the work being done at Napohaku, on June 28, 2012, Ahagui broke ground at Kauai Nui, which began the long-delayed Kauai Nui Marsh Environmental Restoration Project. The restoration improvements removed invasive plant species, replacing them with native vegetation on 40 acres of land between Castle Hospital and Kukunono subdivisions. In doing so, the flow of Kahanaiki Stream has improved and the establishment of seasonal mudflats enhanced the habitat of the Hawaiian duck, stilt, moorhen, heron, and coot. All of Hawaii's water birds are listed as endangered. The ponds are fed by solar powered pumps and the entire area is fenced in to protect the wildlife. These improvements have improved water quality, created a wetland, and re-established a native upland forest. The $6.4 million restoration project was completed last spring. I'd now like to introduce my friend, Remy. He's going to tell a story and also how you can get involved. Sit with your eyes closed, fill the world around you. The walls that once enclosed you are now gone. The ceiling is now transparent. The sun is now shining, burnishing the green, crisp grass that has now replaced the floor. For a moment, you can even feel a cool breeze. You can feel Mother Earth beneath you. You can also feel the pain. She bears the weight of the facility that talks about taking care of her. She holds firm, loyal, holding up. This facility as individuals pass through year after year in hopes that one person, maybe two, if she's lucky, three or four individuals will share the awareness of her pain as she suffers. <clears throat> she's no different from you and I. Just because we can't hear her pain, does not mean her silence gives us the okay to continue.
Maha Pui is a parent organization. They are the curators and land managers, land keepers, and so on, of Napahatu. Every third Saturday of the month is Community Cleanup Day. Individuals from all over come and meet in the parking lot of Napahatu. There, around 8.15 to 8.30, a designated leader or a well-experienced volunteer will give guidance, organize individuals, split people up, and give them their tasks and duties for cleaning up for that day. Some activities may include, but are not limited to, slope and trail maintenance, plant restoration, ridding of invasive plants, moving and relocating of native plants. Please remember to wear a hat, pants, shoes, coastal shoes, sunscreen, and anything else you may need to protect yourself. Tools will be provided, however, food and water will not. Bring friends, family, neighbors, co-workers, bosses, managers, CEOs, whomever. Bring music as well. Let's make this more of just a service learning activity. Let's make it an, an amazing experience, and also a lifestyle, possibly a tradition. We expect our audience to take up our ideas of cleanup and help us make No Pahaku a cleaner space. In order to accomplish a new mind, we must first push into the right direction. Have a quote. A land ethic then reflects the existence of an ecological conscience. And this, in turn, reflects a conviction of individual responsibility for the land, all the labor. Here's the contact information of Kami Schroeder. This is her number and email if you'd like to contact her for any questions, if you have any concerns, if you want to just drop a line. Here's her contact information. <laughs> Let's give Mother Nature a sigh of relief rather than a sigh of grief. Let's do something to give back. She's done enough. She's held on for as many years and she will continue to hold on for years to come. In order to allow those years to come, we must make it.